so many makes me nervous thanks for coming down on a bun day in bangalore but yeah with that we'll start we have a quick 20 minutes let's mix the let's make the best of it so the idea of today's talk is to kind of get a reflective sense into the conversations we are trying to have so with that i think since all of us are here of we love we have a shared love for ux we are excited about ai and there's a certain sort of uncertainty in terms of what's really happening and a lot of that is because we have been thinking about a world of tomorrow which is seems like it's already here and it's catching up to us very fast and at least the reason i am here is because i want to talk about human ai collaboration and i think it's finally where we are where we can figure out how humans and ai is going to collaborate together and seems like the gist of what we should be talking about so i think what we'll talk about first is why do i care about all of this so the idea as i said again today's uh, talk more of a conversation is to figure out what's the right way to approach it and not in the sense of talking about tips and tricks do's and don'ts what principles to follow it's more about i think what do you do in this muddle confusion when you start with something totally new and for me it's reflective because i started on this journey couple of months back and for me it was a top sheet of arrive trying to understand what am i making head and tail of how do i work with what i know how do i toss it out of the window and still create something impactful so bear with me and what will help is i think we are going to go through very fast i have too many slides so don't try to take pictures it will help if you are also kind of absorbing it and kind of treat it like a conversation thank you so yes so why do we care first of all there is a promise of ai let's look at that it talks about increased efficiency productivity improved decision making natural language based interactions kick ass promise is right very interesting something to look forward to and i am also sold to that we want this but sea of unknowns with all of this unknowns and new terminologies new ways of talking about processes trying to critique our current process it's very hard to understand what is going to happen what all do i learn what all do i not learn how do i look at my current process and what do i do about it so you will also see i think now that this whole thing has become very consumerish in nature the expectations that users have are changing they are evolving they are trying to experiment with what to do what not to do tech has changed a lot and designers are scared of tech let's not kind of kid ourselves we have to be at the end of the day what do how do we make head and tail of this new thing that is happening then designers like me specifically are confused i want to understand what do i do at this point and you join a fast paced startup you are trying to create something but you have no idea what you are doing at the end of the day so let's take a moment embrace the fuzziness and i think this is the first exercise of centering yourself where you realize you are in the business of design it's all about fuzziness that is where creativity comes through this is where the fun of design was that's why i got into design i don't know about you guys but yeah so i think that's the first step so moving ahead let's go a little mythologically try to understand what all has really changed and if you look at what people are talking about track social media seems like a lot has can we start pinpointing some so let's first of and foremost talk about nature of code the nature of code has always been fluid we have been trying to achieve things from ages now it's just that it's now that it's possible that fluidity has surfaced to the realm of reality with llms and ai kind of becoming mainstream while we were used to thinking more dumb, dumb, uh, sorry deterministically where you are expecting system to always behave in a very specific preset manner now things have become probabilistic a simple math question that you put to chat gpt like 2 plus 3 is being answered probabilistically so what is really happening here we are pretty much used to this model where i ask a question the system answers i click on something something happens so it's a very ask and be served model what we are transitioning into is a question answer to suggestion to question again model where the system can probabilistically suggest you something can even ask you a question back how do you make sense of this on top of that this cascades so an interaction can predominantly turn into an infinite loop like this where things are just keep on moving ahead how do you deal with this complexity so now let's say though we are designers we are also users of this and me personally as a user i don't want to deal with this complexity we'll talk about me as a designer later i want someone else to take care of this i want this specific complexity to be offloaded because i just want to bear the fruits of what this technology what this new advent promises me this is a problem for us because that complexity has to be taken care of us by us now so let's take another specific case we are very used to talking about point to point interactions again we talked about cta is another things they are because of this turning into more compounded interactions 
now you can write a simple command and offset a huge load of task to something, an AI agent bot. In this case, remember how much time it takes to schedule a meeting with someone when you have to do the to and fro. In this case, your point of interaction is only twice with the system. And at the end of the day, all that complexity is taken over. It seems like, and I'll say it seems like, because I'm not sure yet, it seems like it is all about outcomes now. We've been thinking about actions and interactions, but outcomes seem to be more important because the actions are being clubbed together. Let's take another case. I, as a designer, my whole and sole job is to figure out what my user wants. So I have a perceived intent of what my user needs. But since the platforms are becoming open-ended, the capabilities are becoming open-ended, a user's intent is also fuzzy. And it's more applicable today where a user or a person, when I use something like ChatGPT or any other tool, I'm also trying to figure out what it can really do to me. And if it was applicable that we thought our users don't know what they want, it's far more applicable today. Their intents are fuzzy. How do you deal with that? That's where the sea of data comes into the picture. You have data across preference, context, possibilities. So it seems like what is limiting now is the capability I has as a designer to create these permutation combinations, to figure out what all is really possible. An example of this is, let's talk about going from point A to point B, how many times we have taken Google Maps and utterly been dissatisfied with what the result is, because though you want to go from point A to B, it's not purely utilitarian. You just don't want to reach. And while you are trying to optimize the intent for fast, you might miss out on joy, you might miss out on safety. So these elaborate contexts are something I think that we have to come back, take back into the picture. And this is where it's finally possible. So that's the second thing, second so-called possible thing that I want to talk about is how do you model intent into design? And we have been doing that. It just become more broad. Let's take another example. We have always, the world runs on statistical averages. Your medicine, the TV shows you watch, and so on and on and on and on, what are your grocery stocks. Now, the system can actually talk about hyper-personalization. Every person can be their own anomaly and it can be beautiful. How do you deal with that? And the reason this is mostly coming in because our limitation as a designer in time, in, in, and the systems that we also work with has been playing a predominant role economically also. We have not been able to design for infinite use cases that we can think about or talk about making it accessible for everyone as much as wholeheartedly we have wanted, we want, we've been wanting and trying to make it accessible. I think it's finally possible where you can really make these systems more accessible, more personalized. And one of the examples is now that you have agents to do everything for you. Health assistance, from educational assistance, and so on and on and on. That takes us to our third part. We can probably finally stop playing big brothers and let users take charge of their own destinies. So, but let's, let's take a stop here, let's absorb this, because next one is going to be fun. And I remember, this was very reflective. I'm not trying to give you principles. This is where I was, and I just realized, have I run myself into a corner now? Is this even the right approach? Seems very interesting. Because this takes me to something I quote as fragility of choice. There are a lot of fragile choices that we have to make. And they are termed fragile because they have huge unintended consequences, which we don't understand about. And we tend to take very simple outcomes out of them. So coming back, is this even the right approach? Let's go ahead for the first fragile choice. So a lot of these fragile choice come with very wise statements. This is one I came up with. Design for fluid agency, not agents. What the hell does that even mean? So in this case, I do a smart thing. I plot it across two axes. I talk about user control and AI capability. AI capability. And try to see what is really happening. And I realize there are four types of things possible. And I, I can, in lieu of time, I'll not go through a lot of stuff, but let's focus on the new one. The collaborative is the new paradigm, which has finally emerged where high capability AI with high intent and how agent, high agency users can interact together and do something about it. Seems fun, what to do about it, I have no idea. It seems I have to make a choice here. And it would look like I'm trying to tell you to design either one of these products, but if you go deeper, and at least I realize in my own journey that every product that I'm going to make, which is AI enabled, is going to be a mix of all four of these at different points of time. 
So it's not about designing for one, it's about figuring out which fits at which scenarios and how do you design for that. So first and foremost is I have to make a right choice. You have to make a right choice. That's the first fragile choice. This makes sense now, right? But it really doesn't. I realized that was also a pitfall. Because who watches the guard at the end of the day? The problem here is we think of AI as a wise wizard with while it's a four to five year old kid which needs a parental supervision the whole time. It needs to be told what is right, what is wrong. It needs to surface and talk about what it's thinking so that I can correct it. So you cannot really take the human out of the loop in this process. So in this case, we have to make sure the guardians cannot be left out of the process. So you cannot only design for human agency, you have to design for agents also. And it's our job to make sure they can communicate. So that they just don't try to interpret, try to work with us, they also communicate and so that can, they, they can accept that sort of feedback. That's our second fragile choice. You have to help make agents make choices. This is another statement. I think that as soon as I started working for AI and re started reading sexy medium blog posts, this is the first thing I read again and again and again. And I realized, yeah, what's wrong with this? Till you realize there is. You are not designing for trust, you're designing for credibility. And there is a reason, we'll talk about this. A system which has to be function has to have certain sort of expertise to deserve that trust. Because that credibility is going to be tested at every interaction, at every point of time that you work with it. How do you do that? So I think, we most, uh, a lot of confusion would be for me also was to differentiate uh, lexographically what trust means, what credibility means. And this is what I realized. And the reason of this is AI can be wrong a lot. And we talked about expertise. So assume you, I, for some reason, let's assume you guys trust me now. And I have no expertise. And that trust would lead to a vantage point where I can give you a lot of funders which are not going to make sense. This is exactly what currently AI is doing. And we have to figure out how to work around this because high trust and low expertise is a bad recipe. These are very simple examples. Uh, think about cases where you're trying to create a mental health assistant. You're creating a safe driving assistant. Here are the costs are lives at the end of the day. You cannot take that trust for granted because of your branding exercises, because of the cute uh, kind of persona you have chosen for your AI agent at the end of the day and lead to outcomes which are not sensible. So you have to help users make choices. You have to learn to tell no. You have to help them understand what's the right decision that they can take out of it. So a lot of interesting fragile choices. Let's take a pause. Let me check how much time we have. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, so many things, what I do with all of this. So we still don't have a tight framework. I still want to understand what do I do with all of this. I have a sea of thoughts and possibilities to run with. Let's take certain example. But at the end of the day, wasn't our holy grail trying to understand what, again, Double Diamond did for us. And no criticism there. I think it's a good idea to have a conversation and understand where the current process is falling short. In this case, let's just take, this is a very interesting research paper, you guys can search for it. Let's only take the initial discover defined phase. We're not going to go into screens at all. And there are these issues that are being highlighted. If you look at discover and define phase, didn't we have our holy grail answers in personas, journey maps, and these things that we used to create? So let's just take one of those. Let's just talk about personas. This is a typical persona, I think. Talks about needs, wants, and blah, 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 and whatnot. What's the problem here? So before we go there, let's try to categorize this for a second. This is a snapshot of a real person in a real point of time. It's a slice of their life just a simplistic slice of their life, which is going to dictate how your product looks at them for next years, which is eternity in tech. So let's take a step back. Let's go back to creating sexy diagrams. Let's talk about, in this case, uh, OK, I didn't give you the context. I'm very sorry. So this is for a music learning platform. We were trying to kind of create how do we look at better interactions for a music learning platform? So let's take a figure out a basis for this. Let's say there are two aspects which are very important, awareness and drive, and how do we talk about that? Let's just map it. We get four personas now. So we started with one, now we have four. But these are still snapshots. We are still at the same problem. Let's just focus on the top left persona, Priyam. If you look at where these people are right now, depending on what you do, they can transgress into different quadrants. And understanding this is fun, because there are going to be events which lead them to this. And why we talk about this is because as a designer, again, I have to have an intent. And I want to intend to reach that person from this point to that point against these forces. 
now our personas just bloomed now we can see what is happening over time how they are evolving into different archetypes trying to see what is happening what are the cause and effect relationship of things so another example this was for a fintech platform a crypto fintech platform at that point similarly you will see there are a lot of forces being mapped across archetypes when someone transgress from one archetype to other what is really happening and so on and on another example i'll quickly rush through let's call these dynamic personas the reason to define them was we could define better intents we could see since we had better intents we could also look at better outcomes and so on and on all fine and dandy but is that all as usual with the tonality of the talk that we are going with we have to cross question it again why were we limited to two dimensions first of all this is something that i did like a year back or so we didn't have llms and what not that was all the capacity i had to process but is that even applicable today so you would want to create a three dimensional or a four dimensional map but before you do that let's talk about something else it's a very uh, pulling thought to increase those dimension and look at that complexity that emerges but i don't think we've even done justice to two dimensions that we've talked about as a designer i've talked about an ideal goal that might not be a user's intended goal we just talked about the control and freedom users have now that might not even be the real thing that would have happened so as much as you are trying to optimize for again that single specific thing what really happens is very different how do i even model these interactions anymore and not get stuck into that zone of ideality that i've created and the calls i've taken for my user again so different journeys different points similar end outcome the intents can be totally different someone wants to learn at a slower pace someone doesn't want to save up on your own schedule and live like a miser so how do you now figure those things out then we have to think about all of these things a lot of terms i read again how do you talk about ai intent how do you talk about intervalidation and so on and on and on and it seems like i this is where i run into as of today where i am is where i figured out there is something called as intent personas as you already uses it and it's something that we have to figure out a way to get back into mainstream and see how our design process is going to get evolved from that point but this is where i have to leave you on a cliffhanger because this is where i am so but with that though it, we talked about that there is one more question i think i'll just rush through this there is one more specific question has my role as a designer changed and i think this is not me, only me asking and a lot of us are wondering about that uh, but i'll probably talk about my own reflection i don't think so not fundamentally because i have always thought that my role as a designer is to mediate between multiple entities can be business tech user can be something else but that job of mediation and trying to bring that balance about has not really changed this is what i've always done this is what i'll always do i'll still be crafting experiences and journeys it just that it's become very complex and that complexity has opened up a lot of thing but i also now have access to the same technology that i'm making for my users and so in that case we are going back to coming back to human ai collaboration we are going to design for it and it's important that we design with it and that's all thank you we have time for a question probably one question maybe ask the organizers <laughs> cool we can take one question if you guys want awesome thank you guys